Hi, and welcome to the Studio Marco Primo. Today, I propose a do-it-yourself project, some attenuators. So maybe you don't know uh, what they are, what they're used to. Uh, mainly, attenuators uh, are used to uh, reduce the volume of a signal. And why am I being, building one? Um, many people have said that some preamps, some high-end preamps, will have a different sound when they, you push them. And uh, since I have eight uh, Focusrite ISA preamps, that does not have a master volume, so the output volume uh, is automatic uh, and due to the gain level that you uh, give it. So I'm going to try to build a 10 dB attenuator to reduce the volume and force me to push the gain a bit and see if the sound is different or not. So uh, this video will be the first part, the build, and the second video will be the audio tests. So stay tuned for the second one. So first, I want to thank uh, Boswell from the forum recording.org. He is a member and he offered me uh, this schematic that I should build. And uh, he even helped me to modify it to include a switch. So I'm going to show you uh, both design. So this is the design uh, without the switch. Uh, the simplest uh, thing that you could do. It could be inside a, a cylinder connector or in a box or um, on a circuit board. Uh, you can design it like you want. And this is the second design with the switch included. Um, and what I wanted is to activate it and deactivate it as wish. So that's why I chose the second design with the switch. And I actually de decided to do four of them for uh, my ISA 428, which has four uh, pristine preamps. So we're going to test those on the second video. So uh, let's dive in right away on the design. Of course, uh, I will comment what I'm doing, but uh, if you have any electronic knowledge, you don't really need to uh, follow what I did. Uh, just use the design. And uh, of course, here's the values that you can use. Uh, and just choose how much the level should be reduced and choose your parts accordingly. I started by setting up a welded clean place to work. And then uh, put all the parts uh, so I can see them, and I started to assemble them uh, in the case. Uh, the holes in the case were, uh, were made in advance. And of course, I'm trying to align the parts so it will be easy to solder uh, later on. Now I'm tightening up all the parts and uh, finishing the alignment. And I'm preparing some wires. The gauge is the exact same uh, gauge uh, that you will find in a microphone uh, cable. And then we we'll start to assemble the parts. Each cable are cut to the right length, so you don't have extra wiring out uh, everywhere. And of course, uh, the resistors and the, the, the first part of the circuit um, at the connector side, the, there's a danger of shortage. So I decided to put double side tape to isolate uh, the resistors. And since it's double-sided tape, I 
they could uh, glue together and uh, won't move uh, if I uh, shake the box and everything. I admit I should have bought a circuit board and assemble all the parts on it. Uh, I went with uh, that design on the air and isolation was uh, required though. So making sure that uh, nothing can touch uh, any other parts and then after that uh, I'm gonna close the box. You can do any aesthetics on it. Uh, I engrave uh, minus 10 dB and afterward I thought it was not uh, so visible in my studio so I added some paint and that's it that's the design so my build is complete and uh, you saw what it uh, looks like of course uh, putting all the parts in the air like that and uh, needing to isolate them with uh, papers or uh, any anything that will isolate them is not the ideal design uh, maybe later on I will uh, go back to it and buy a secret board, design my uh, circuit myself and then put the parts on it. Uh, so that might be a future project. So um, I'm going to leave you with that and see you for the second video with audio tests. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe, click on like, hit the bell to get notifications and share my videos. It's a great help for my channel.